Hi, I'm Ned, and you're watching Photo Learningism. We got a ton of questions about using the 2D animation module in Krita, uh, particularly with using reference video and bringing the frames in, exporting the final thing out. So I just wanted to give you a workflow of my process and show you how that works and actually show you, how, show you it working. <laughs> That'd be good, right? Why don't we take a look at that? So once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time, I do a lot of work on this channel to surface the cheap or free art technologies so that you can know about them and make good use of them and also be a part of a community of learners, like-minded people who are seeking information and knowledge and experience sharing. Thank you for being a part of it. So getting into Krita, if you haven't seen kind of the, the history in the background, go watch that video on doing uh, 2D animation and uh, getting your bearings for where this is gonna go. Cause I'm not gonna go so deep into the, the tools and things. I'm gonna focus more on the workflow aspect of this so you can see the different pieces and how they fit together, all right? So jumping in here, I pre-recorded a little bit of this because some parts just take a long time and I wanted to speed them up and get us through this and show you the concept without having you sit there for an hour. <laughs> so what we're looking at here is Kden Live, and this is a fantastic open source video editing tool. Try it out if you haven't seen it and watch the video on it and get a good sense of what this can do for you. That's not so important except for the fact that it gives me the functionality I need to really get into Krita and use it. All right, so starting this off, what I'm gonna do is use a little bit of video I shot on my iPhone, really basic, no frills, just kind of doing a concept of panning around my face because I wanted to start working on this with animation. That can be a really difficult thing to simulate in 2D animation is actually the motion of moving around something. So I shot some video and again, I want to make this really, really short. Every frame takes time when you're doing it by hand. Uh, so I wanted to kind of trim this in. I wanted to take the initial pan around of what I'm doing and make that even faster I want to speed it up so what you'll see me doing here is I'm just looking for kind of the comfortable pause point where I can take before that and speed it up and I found that when I blink that just seems to be the best moment that we can catch up and move on from there so I'm gonna cut from there and now I'm going to add speed and I tried at first taking this to a thousand percent because I was thinking oh we'll just kind of work this like a speed ramp type of effect that was actually just too fast um, because when you play through it, it's, wow, what happened? So <laughs> so I had to back that up a second and then try at about half that, at about 500% instead of 1,000. And that was more the sweet spot of it's fast, but you still see the motion. It's not too fast for the eye, and it moves pretty fluidly, reasonably well enough. All right, so that puts us down to about a second in 24 frames, you know, sense, about a second's worth of footage. I am exporting now as frames and that's important because you need the individual frames to work from the newer version of Krita will eventually allow you to import video but right now it's still frames also you'll see me using png that's not so important you can use jpeg just as well this is important here is i'm putting in a special uh syntax that tells the export to step sequentially through the frames otherwise it'll just keep overwriting the same frame over and over again and uh, that doesn't really help you so the sequence that you'll need, I'll put up on the screen here. It's kind of a weird combination of percent and uh, numbers and things just so you can have it. All right. These are all the frames. There you go. All right. So now we're done in Kden Live. Now we're going to hop into Krita. And again, I'm using a nightly build here of version 5. This is kind of exciting to see what things will be available, but also know that this is slightly different than the build you may have. All right, and I'll try to point those out as we go. I'm setting up just a new drawing of 1920 by 1080, which is the usual HD dimensions um, because we're working in the HD ratio for video. So that's important to start that way. And I'm gonna hop workspaces here into animation and here we can start. So I need to bring in the frames that I created. So I'm doing that using that uh, loader. I'm gonna point it to the frames and it will know, I'm just gonna select the ones I want, it will know by the numbering sequence what the order should be. And I'll point this out here where it starts at one, works its way sequentially all the way down to the bottom. That is the order we want. And you can tell it which frame to start at and the step, you know, one frame, multiple frames if you really wanted to get into that, but one frame at a time is fine. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. 
That is importing them all. The more frames you have and the higher res you have, the longer it'll take, unless your machine is super awesome. Mine is not, so I'm trying to keep this basic. All right, and you can kind of see this is, again, the reference that we're starting. Now, you'll notice how that kind of played on through. Um, that's because the timeline expects the overall file to be 100 frames. That's the default. So I'm going to trim that down. And this, by the way, is usually on the left side of the, the Krita build, uh, where my face is right now. Um, but for this one, it's on the right in the Krita 5 nightly build. So <clears throat> that's where you find it if you're going to try this out. Okay. So... What I'm actually going to do is pause there and take my face away <laughs> so you can see a little bit more. There we go. So I'm test playing through once or twice just to kind of see what it does, make sure it comes through okay. And we now need a new layer. So I'm going to add that in because what we have brought in is just a reference point. And I don't want to draw on top of that because then I can't take it away when I'm done with it. <laughs> so. I think this is new to Krita 5. I added the new layer and it kind of confused me for a second where it went. And I noticed that, okay, it actually dropped it into the layers, like your painting layer, instead of down in the timeline. And this is pretty cool in that it maintains kind of sub layers for the animation module within each of those. So I did not notice that when I originally worked through the animation module in the current stable build. So this looks like something new, all right? So I'm now gonna select a brush. You may have to flip on this this docker um, in the earlier versions if you don't see it. Uh, here it just appears by default on the left. The left is kind of something new for the layouts. Um, so I'm selecting just kind of a thicker charcoal pencil and I am getting set up to do some overlay drawing here. Uh, first thing I realized is that the color is not right, so I fixed that. And here, yeah, now it's going very fast because, again, this process took me about 20 minutes and it's just not worth your time or mine to sit here watching me uh, fidget my way through this. So I wanted the pressure sensitivity. That's another reason I went with kind of the charcoal pencil is that I wanted to be able to use a little bit of pressure uh, in certain places to give it texture. And um, to do that, I'm using a digital drawing tablet. This is a, uh, a Huon and it's a H420 in case you're curious. It's a really small one, but it's good for learning and it was not that expensive. Uh, so I'd recommend giving that a try if you're on a budget and you want to give it a shot. Now, because this is just reference, you'll notice me embellishing a little bit, adding in some more hair, doing all those kinds of things, and uh, just uh, taking some creative liberties uh, with the process. All right. I had originally thought that onion skinning, which is kind of an overlay mode of, of showing you what the frame before has, would be a good idea, but it was actually just getting in my way, and I realized, you know what, I don't need that because I have the reference video anyway. Onion skinning is good as if you're doing pure drawing without a reference, so keep that in mind that uh, that may come in use later. All right, so I started drawing things out, and eventually I think I figured out that I was going to take away that onion skinning, yep, when we arrived at our first layer. So you do have to add in blank frames, by the way. I'm just going to reuse the one I have, and that actually did seem really useful. I was trying to avoid the look where if you redraw things again and again, especially, especially with uh, pressure sensitivity, it can have kind of like this fuzzy jump look to it. So I was trying to reuse what's there, and a good way to do that is actually just to select the parts that you need. Now, you probably could make this easier on yourself if you just separated out these pieces, like in my case, the sideburns, the ear, the hair, just make them separate layers and then move them much more easily that way uh, rather than having to map out and select with the selector every time you want to move something. You could do it this way, but I kind of found that it was a little tedious and sometimes uh, caused uh, overlapping that I did not want. So keeping them as separate layers is a good practice if you're going to be doing a lot of this over a long term project. All right. So. I've just about got this frame done. Yeah, I'm just going to update the bottom here, move the collar, update the neck piece a little bit, check to make sure it moves okay. And there we go. Draw the, uh, the other side of the collar in. Okay. One more frame. And again, you'll see me make some adjustments. Uh, with the Move tool, there is a really handy end of that in the options for perspective which i tried out and that actually did seem to add some some benefits in terms of moving things with a little bit of perspective movement because sometimes the face moves you know <laughs> face moves in three dimensions and we're drawing in two so we kind of need to compensate for that with how we move these these reference lines along all right 
So this is almost there, and you can kind of see how the lines follow my face for just those couple of frames. A little quick updating of the ear and the hair, make sure that moves too. All right, a little bit of perspective adjustment. All right, now for this, I had thought originally, well, first approach I was erasing it because I was going to redraw it, and then I remembered, ah, it's going to have kind of a jumpy look to it. I want to try to avoid that. So I tried moving just the part of the collar which I thought would be most important for the movement, but when you're using kind of this, this charcoal or even a graphite look to it with a textured pattern, it has kind of the weird overlap towards the uh, connector points there. So for that, I'd say it's probably worth just redrawing it and blending it a little better. But, you know, we learn. <laughs> we move on. So updating again the other side, redrawing in the collar, redrawing in the rest of me that wasn't there before, and we have a couple of frames to work from. All right? So now we've really got what we need from this. And, uh, yeah, one or two uh, clicks with the pen. So I put the pen down and I start using the mouse again. <laughs> Saving the work is important. It, saving as a KRA is actually especially important because that captures all the layers and all them animation and all of that in one file. So make sure you save a KRA. Big important thing if you want to work on this and come back to it. <laughs> Do that. All right. So that is saving if you can see along the bottom there. Okay. Now I'm going to take away the reference video. I just click the eye next to that layer. And we now have the remaining piece, just those lines that I drew in. And you can see how there's some very simple motion, but actually pretty cool. It, it follows the fluid motion of my head. And this would look a lot better if I had time to draw this out. But again, this took quite a bit of time to get to this point. I'm speeding it up for your benefit. All right, so to get it out, we have to use the render animation option. And you do that with video. Uh, that's the option along the top. You'll also see me just noting the frames that I want out. I'm just going to do the three frames that I did because I don't want the rest. I didn't do anything. You do have to point to FFmpeg. Uh, I did have to update that. I downloaded an updated version once and free point to the FFmpeg.exe uh, just in case you run into some issues there that might be necessary. And now I'm just clicking OK. And that's going to spit it out. So... It's quick and easy because, again, that was very, very short. Didn't do a whole lot there. Um, and there's my file. You'll see me get confused here <laughs> because it's so short that actually the video player couldn't detect it. It was three frames, which is not even close to a second. So that kind of <coughs> that kind of uh, made me think for a minute. And then I realized that was probably the case. So what I ended up doing was... Uh, bringing that into Kden Live eventually, and bring it into there, just to see what we can see. All right. So again, this is very, very short, so I'm going to zoom in there, because again, three frames is not very big in the grand scheme of things. Now, getting out of this, this is the actual video. I put it back into the end of this playback, so you can see it a little more clearly. It's the back, forward, back, forward. That's really what it is. All right, so that's really the whole show. And I hope that was really interesting to see because that was fun for me to drive through and, and kind of prove this all out. And I wanted you to be able to see that all these pieces do actually work and the settings you can use and where I started and where I ended and just kind of problem solved along the way for things that were a little bit unexpected. So that's how it works. Uh, if this was helpful to you, please consider giving me a thumbs up so I know this is along your... your thought pattern that was uh, beneficial and uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome things that are coming up and also ask a question leave a comment not just for me but for the whole community because I love it when when the community helps other community out um, it's just it's so great to see people helping each other um, in this format so thank you for spending your time with me I will see you at the next video take care I wanted to go back to uh, some of the Nah, I didn't go up right low. The words coming out of my mouth are just... Print up version 5. It's a nightly build. Don't get too excited. But let's just see how it works and refresh it. And hopefully that's helpful for you to see. And why not? Let's do it. That was just almost there, but I lost it towards the end. Train went off the rails.